Wistful Thinking is brought to you by the Cage Club Podcast Network. For more podcasts about movies and nostalgia, visit cageclub.me. That's cageclub.me. Welcome to Wistful Thinking, a podcast where we revisit pop culture from our youth to see if it's still as good all grown up. I'm Carrie Gallo Regan. With me today, as always, is my co host, Jordan Poland Clark. Hello. And today, as part of our Halloween series, we are covering the 1993 classic, Hocus Pocus. Yes. <laughs> that I did correct. it, though. I got there, eventually. You did. That was, Kara wasn't reading that, and we usually read it. She didn't read that. She just said that from her brain, everyone. From my brain. And it's been a very long day. Um, um, so we watched Hocus Pocus, because you wanted to. Yeah, well, for two reasons. One, uh, I have never seen it because I tried to watch it as a sleepover once and I ate a bunch of popcorn and got really freaked out and then threw up and missed the whole movie. Uh, <laughs> oh, you didn't tell me that story. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, this was a recurring problem in my childhood, like I mentioned before. I did not figure out until I was an adult that I actually cannot digest corn. Um, so I would, like, eat popcorn at a movie or whatever and um especially if it was like a a movie that freaked me out that would like send my body kind of crazy that happened in Dante's Peak I had to leave the movie theater (laughs) we would not have been friends no is it the popcorn or the no oh the barf yeah (laughs) throw up I can't do throw up yeah like at all yeah. So we wouldn't have been able to hang out because I would have been really scared of you. <laughs> oh no. There's plenty of other reasons to be scared of me. That's No, not that's one. the only one that matters to me. <laughs> um, I'm willing to deal with like every other thing from human beings. I think <laughs> that's not true. Every other thing is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> it's too many things. Yeah. But it was a sleepover at my house and I think at a certain point I did come back and finish watching the movie with everyone else because towards the end of the movie I was like I think I've seen this part it was somewhat familiar but how about you had you seen this before Uh, I don't know probably (laughs) I didn't like remember it but like I'm sure I've seen it yeah um were you wait when you were small were you was it did it actually feel scary to you or was it just the popcorn no, I think it did also, that opening sequence. It was, yeah, because really I'm, I'm curious because I was watching this with my friend, my roommate and friend who had never seen it before, and she said she never had never seen it because she was too scared when she was a kid, and I was like, what? This movie isn't scary, and then we turned it on. I was like, okay, this first part's a little scary. Yeah. Do you want to um, uh, try to do the plot? Sure. I'm just going to read the summary from IMDb. A curious youngster moves to Salem where he struggles to fit in before awakening a trio of diabolical Wait. what? Never mind. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> I thought I already had a problem with it. I don't. Oh. <laughs> uh, a curious youngster moves to Salem where he struggles to fit in before awakening a trio of diabolical witches that were executed in the 17th century. Uh, directed by Kenny Ortega, starring who directed a lot of other like real things. Yeah, I don't know. Open link and new tab. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, he directed High School Musical three. Uh, uh, and another ooh. musical thing, right? And also uh, the Winter Olympics in two thousand two. Um, this is it, that Michael Jackson documentary. Um, oh, this is weird. He directed the TV, live TV version of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. What? Which we covered on our last episode. We well, we didn't, about not that, that version, but obviously. Yeah. Oh, he directed an episode of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. So he, oh, he directed an episode of Bunheads. Love so he show. directs a not I mean not a lot but like some musical things yeah which I and then in his Wikipedia it also says 
that I love how I'm like, I read a news Wikipedia and then I'm forcing you to look it up and actually <laughs> say what it really says. <laughs> um, it says something about how he choreographed a bunch of movies, which I was oh, like, interesting. what does that mean? And also, if you watch this movie, it's very well choreographed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like it is, it, there are parts where it, like it, the witches are almost like dancing together and yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it looks like he's done a lot of musical work. Um, so that's interesting. Um, oh, I watched another musical since we just finished our musical series Which a little one? while ago. Um, it's called On the Town, and it's from, like, the 50s, I think? Mm-hmm. Uh, a vehicle for Frank Sinatra and Gene Kelly. And it's uh, the two of them and a third guy, and they're in the Navy, and they're uh, docked in New York City, and they have 24 hours of shore leave, so they got to see the town. And um, it's crazy, and it's really fun. And um, a lady anthropologist, a horny lady anthropologist, sings and does a dance number about how she wants to fuck a caveman. So uh, I do I highly questions. recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> What are your questions? What are the actual words of that song? Because I know that's not what she says. No, she does not say, I am a horny anthropologist and want to fuck a caveman. But um, I I could not tell you what the words are. But they (laughs) are. That's what the song is about. (laughs) Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, It's pretty wild. There are some really surreal and wonderful other dance uh, scenes as well. It was directed by the by like co-directed by Gene Kelly and um, the guy who also did Singing in the Rain and like a mm-hmm. bunch of other movies of his that have those like weirdly lit kind of surreal dance mm-hmm. scenes that are wonderful. So I'm glad that uh, this show has gotten me back into musicals because there's a I lot mean, of them out there and they're all kind of really weird and wonderful. Have you seen Singing in the Rain recently? I have. Not recently. I but haven't I have seen, seen it in it. like 10 years. Yeah. But I remember being like, wow, actually I love this. Yeah. It, oh, it's wonderful. And there's this one uh, scene with Sid Charisse that like doesn't make any sense at all and it's just like her in this like white flowing garment just dancing and it's just absolutely unbelievable it's so good um this movie was a musical for like one scene oh was it i didn't read any trivia about it so you're gonna have to but you did see the movie right (laughs) yeah i did watch it you know the part where ben mittler sings oh yeah (laughs) like for a whole scene she like does a song and dance yeah i forgot about that that she's kind of turns into a musical for like one second yeah i forgot about that um, this movie is weird in a lot this of ways. Movie's really weird. Do you want to talk about? Well, I thought there was like two really specific ways that I was like, "What?" <laughs> and I guess they're kind of related. They're both like weird sex stuff. Yeah. Like well, okay, so I know what movie... one of them are. What's the other thing? Well, okay, the first one. So this movie is rated PG. This is a children's movie, and. It's very weirdly obsessed with the main character being a virgin. Mm-hmm. He's like a 15-year-old boy. And they mention it like 20 times. It, yeah, it's a the plot whole, point. It's a, it's a very important plot point that he's a virgin. Because the witches are... They were gone under some spell where a virgin had to light a candle to bring them back. Like... <laughs> All they had to do to not make this weird was make that literally anything else. <laughs> like, the witches could have come back in two million other ways. Yeah. But some adult man was like, no, 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 no. A virgin's got to light the candle in this kid's movie. Like, that's weird. Um, and he does, and they come back. But, like, so then, like he's this the kid the main character in the movie is like running around with this girl that he has a crush on who is not a virgin because she didn't want to light the candle and his little sister who's like eight years old and who is thora birch who's like so cute in this she's she's so good she's great she's always um, great but she's so good in this 
What um, do you call them, Max? Yabos. <laughs> like, but that's like more weird sex stuff. Like, yeah. why is that in this? Um, but but so yeah. Then his like eight year old sister is like constantly pointing out that he's a virgin, which like it's just weird. And they're like shaming him about it too, which like why he's fifteen? Like, leave him mm-hmm. alone. I don't know. So that was really weird and I definitely didn't remember that from uh, like I guess I have seen this before and I don't know so that's one thing Mm -hmm. and then the other thing that I found to be like really off-putting like so I watched this before you did and then we were talking about the next movie I was gonna watch or we were gonna watch and you were like yeah we'll just do a month of powerful witches because we were talking about watching another witch movie and Mm -hmm. I was like oh you haven't seen this these (laughs) witches are not powerful because like all they care about is like being pretty and then the sarah jessica parker witch whose name is just sarah right um Um, yeah i guess i don't think they even bother to change her name i just wrote down sarah jessica parker is very horny sarah yeah Um, she's very horny in this movie is very obsessed with like young boys yeah, but also, like, her and the other sister, who is for sure a very problematic character, the, not Bette Mid- Midler, but Kathy and the, Mid- Jim, the other the, one, the yeah. Jim Dim Dim's character. I can never pronounce the her what? last name. <laughs> Kathy Najimmy. I oh. guess that's her name. It's hard okay. to say. Okay. Um, they play their characters like children. So, like, she kind of has the mindset of a child, any, like, of, like, a boy-crazy child, 13. Yeah, you except know? she's not a child. No. She's like, not. And, like, they're not even trying to make her childlike. Like, she is a woman. She looks hot. Oh, yeah, like, she looks amazing in this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like. Yeah. No, I mean, it's all, it's all not good. Um, so but those are the two what I I thought were weird. What what were you saying? Um, you mentioned the thing about him being a virgin um, to me, and I had said to you that I was surprised that it hadn't come up sooner mm-hmm. on this show because that's a thing that comes up a lot, um, especially in stuff about teens and teen boys and girls. Um, and not just like in popular culture, but like across cultures for like thousands of years, there's been a kind of like obsession with virgins. And I didn't really have a ton of time to like dive into research on that, but I did uh, copy over the description of a book called Virgins, A Cultural History that I'm going to read to you now. Okay. Um, In the Middle Ages, it was believed that only a virgin could charm a unicorn out of hiding. But far from being a quaint, anachronistic concept, virginity remains a central value in Western culture. Typing virgin into Google results, uh, into Google results, typing virgin into Google results in more than uh, one million hits and includes everything from the anti-Nicene fathers to advertisements for free teen virgins, displaying a range of current cultural preoccupations with virginity. This lively, well-ranging examination of a, and this is talking specifically about the book now, this lively, wide-ranging examination of, uh, of, of a phenomenon that has touched many aspects of our culture names different archetypes and facets of the concept of virginity. Examples include the medical virgin, exploring what exactly virginity is and how to rely, uh, and how to reliably identify one. The religious virgin, from the Madonna to the American Christian Rite's insistence on sexual abstinence before marriage. The popular virgin of gothic fiction and modern-day horror films. The political virgin, virginity's intimate connection with money and power. And the monstrous virgin, an embodiment of what is ultimately unknowable and of violence, excess, and death. So that's a description of a book called Virgins, a Cultural History by a woman named Anka Bernau. Um, and I, the reason that I selected that was because it like gives a kind of broad range about, of like how these 
things show up in culture, but that book specifically is covers Western culture from the Middle Ages onward. But if you look outside of that framework, like you see it in so many other places throughout history. Um, so I like as problematic as it is for that to be in a children's movie, it's just part of the kind of cultural fabric of like the world we live in, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, but I did, I, it's like somewhat interesting that it's the boy in this story, um, who gets pointed out as the virgin because so often virginity is like the obsession with virginity is centered around girls. And even the word virgin is gendered, um, because the Latin root for it is the word Virgo, which means young woman. Um, and so while both men and women and people who identified outside the gender binary can be virgins, the experience of losing one's virginity can be confusing regardless of gender. Um, the etymology of the word points directly to that area, that issues of virginity are always about women. Um, and well, like, there's plenty of examples where that's not the case. I think like American Pie is probably like a well, good but, one. But like, let's talk about that first. Yeah, because like that's exactly what I was just thinking about. But it's like thinking about how differently they're represented. Mm -hmm. Like when, like usually, if it's a male character in a movie or a TV show and he's a virgin, it's like he's embarrassed by it right. and it's he a must lose thing. his virginity right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. And when it's a woman, it's usually something that's seen as like a good thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's a virtuous, you know, trait to be a virgin. Like, women's value, um, you know, as far as, like, you know, the history of marriage being a, a financial transaction, you know, women's value is calculated on whether they were a virgin or not, or at least, like, that's one of the things that would go into you know, the calculation of that sort of thing. So it's, like, very tied up in all sorts of shit. Um, yeah. So it was weird that that was mm -hmm. in this so yeah. much. Yeah, and very inappropriate. Like, yeah, because, like, what age of child do you think this movie is for? Oh, I don't know. But, like, children, children. Like, like Thora Birch's need, age in this movie. They don't need to know what that means. Like, yeah, of course not. Not that I think it's like inherently wrong that they could or would know what that means, but just like they don't even need to be thinking about that. Right. Like why? And already normalizing that Yeah. Um idea that like if a teen boy is still a virgin, who like he, in this movie he's like what, fifteen? He's like fifteen. Which is fine. It's fine. It's all so fine. <laughs> like it's it all is fine. fine. Um but yeah, I, I, you know, normalizing that and like continuing to hold virginity up, which, so the description that I read uh, touched on the, like the medical concept of virginity, like there is no such thing actually, like there's no way, like even, you know, women throughout history have been examined to see if their hymen is still intact, but um you know, some people don't develop a hymen. Some people have it break when they're horseback riding. Some people can have sex a zillion times and not have it break until they give birth. So, like, it's virginity is this, like, made up concept that doesn't matter or wouldn't matter if culture didn't place such, like, this, like, crazy high fence around it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's super fucked up. But hey, our culture is super fucked up about sex, so... Yeah. I mean, just this week, you know, <sighs> little, as as we record this, a little current events. Uh, today was uh, the congressional hearings about uh, the Brett Kavanaugh and uh, the sentient dingleberry known as Brett Kavanaugh. Um and they heard testimony from um, at least one of the women who um, is accusing him of attempted sexual assault. I don't know. I, like, tuned it out pretty early in the day because I just couldn't 
I had things I needed to do and like couldn't have my day ruined by all of that stuff coming into my brain. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't know. I know he also testified, um, but I don't know if any of the other women did because we're up to four at this point. It was just her. Okay. We're at. I thought we were only at three today. Uh, see, here you go. Who knows? I think it's three ident like three women who have identified themselves and a fourth letter that was sent to somebody with an anonymous accusation. Maybe. Who knows? By the time this comes out, it'll be different. It won't even matter. It like, won't matter because it'll it be never totally matters. different. Um, but like. He's gone through this kind of, like, laundry list of excuses from, like, I wasn't at that party to, I don't, like, I don't know her to Oh, yeah. I mean, he straight up is just, like, that did not happen. I do not know these women. Right. Uh, But one of his excuses was that he remained a virgin until, like, for several years after that alleged event, Um, which I found interesting because, like, so if he had completed the rape... Would that have been how yeah, would he that lost have his been virginity? Real? Like, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. And so, because we have this like fucked up relationship with virginity, and like the fact that like abstinence is taught as sex education across most of this country, and like even when they do teach sex education, it's not great, and they're not talking about consent and like all of these like really important topics well um, i hope some of them are now at least yeah i mean some I of them probably definitely not are really common but uh definitely i mean it's more prof- i hope that that can like consent and topics of consent are more common than they were when we were in in school um but you know it's in a lot of places kids are not getting any information let alone information that allows them to develop as sexual beings in a healthy way Um, or even just as like humans who know how to talk to each other appropriately like right which is like the basic foundation of all things um but like especially sexuality and like having sexual encounters with other humans like communication (laughs) should be the foundation of that and not whatever i'm gonna take us further down this okay all right detour that you've taken. um do you know slow burn the podcast? podcast yeah yeah i am aware of its existence but and i'm subscribed to it but i have not ever listened to it okay so it's a really good podcast the first season was about watergate mm-hmm. and it was essentially like talking about Watergate going into details that they're like hey people totally forget that this is how this happened um and comparing it to like a lot of the stuff that's happening today with Trump but the second season is out now there I think it's almost finished now um and it's about um Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky Oof. which is like so fascinating yeah like 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 to listen to it while all of this is happening and while Me Too is like such yeah, a thing, and Bre- like Brett Kavanaugh like authored the Star Report, or like worked on the Star Report, right? Mm, I don't know. They haven't talked about him. I believe um, so. Hang on, just to bring it all together. Yeah, he drafted Kenneth Starr's impeachment referral. So oh, like, guy. I'm, I'm like now disgusted by Bill Clinton. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I just never thought about it that much before. Yeah. Um. Because the way that it was framed at the time was completely different. Yeah. And he's a disgusting monster. Yeah. Like, just, like, totally took advantage. And, like, so they talked to Linda Tripp, who made mm-hmm. all the tapes, like, where Monica Lewinsky was, like, saying exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. And, like, Linda Tripp says that she did that because she knew Monica Lewinsky as a friend. Linda Tripp was much older than her. Mm-hmm. And basically it was, like, girl... I need to get you away from this. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's why girl. she did it. It was to protect her because she saw this, like, love struck, like, dumb kid. Yeah. Monica Lewinsky was 24, but Linda Tripp says it was like hanging out with a teenager, basically. But also, like, 24 year olds are idiots. I know. I yeah. was. I for sure was. Yeah. I still for sure am. Was also. <laughs> but so, like, like, to just think that, like, he he took advantage of her yeah 
and she had real feelings and he took advantage of her and, and he was literally the most powerful many, man in the world to think about how many other women he mm-hmm. probably did that to like it's just disgusting mm-hmm. and like that's who runs our shit you know yep. and they all they all are talking like they don't do that and you know right. A lot of them probably have. And well, they the might, person they've... sitting in that in that president's chair right now has sixteen women who have come yeah. out and accused him of sexual assault. Yeah. So, or or like you know, there's been a lot of comparisons to the Clarence Thomas uh, hearings and Anita Hill and everything. And it's like with that, it wasn't even about whether or not he did those things. It was just whether or not those things were bad enough to keep him from the highest court in the but land. But isn't which is that what this is, too? Insane. Of course because, like, it is. we know he, like, he did it. Three yeah, women, and there is a pattern of say behavior. he did it. Yeah. Like, he did it. So if you're choosing to believe what he's saying, like, you're just choosing not to live in reality, and you're mm-hmm. choosing to be like, well, this is fine with me. Yeah, well, I mean, that's <laughs> just kind of a larger problem that we have in general at the moment right now. Not living in reality. Yeah. Well, we all have to live in reality, and I wish they had to, too. Well. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Anyway. <laughs> I agree with that. Um, I. It's just, it's been, it's been, what a, what a century this, like, week has been. Um. <laughs> But also, it's, like, I the past like it's two years. Get worse before it gets better, too. Oh, of course. It always does. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, because there's going to be, like, the thing that I've been really nervous about pretty much, like, since the Harvey Weinstein story broke is, like, the, the pushback and, like, the pendulum swinging back in the other direction and, like, Handmaid's Tale country. Um, I'm, I'm deeply, deeply worried about that. Um, but the good news is that my h- tolerance for horror movies has increased drastically. Uh, so at least 2018 is good for that. I'm able to just watch so many more horror movies without getting really upset and freaked out because reality is so terrifying. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Finally, anyway, I watched Hellraiser podcast- last night. For the first time. Hellraiser, like the one where he has all those needles in his head. Yeah. One of Who, the by the way, it's like from Blockbuster. Not even in the first movie. Like he's in the first movie, but he shows up like an hour in and he's like not really the main character. They just put him <laughs> on the box because he's the scariest looking. He's really scary. Um, and then I guess like he becomes more the protagonist in the subsequent films. But yeah, I am so glad that I waited until I was 31 to see it because I was not ready. <laughs> <laughs> until yesterday basically <laughs> it is terrifying the practical effects are so wonderful though it's really interesting and so the kid that is in hocus pocus um was on he was the main character on eerie indiana which we talked about when we covered are you afraid oh, of the dark oh yeah we did mm-hmm. and at first i was like where do i know this kid from i looked it up you watched like, oh. eerie indiana yeah. No, I never watched it. Oh, it's pretty good. I just remember that the font was small and normal in the credits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you mean the, the first letter? Yeah, like when it said Erie, Indiana. Yeah. It was like lowercase. Mm-hmm. That's all I remember. Yeah. Um, I actually just watched a couple episodes of it a few weeks ago because I noticed that it was on Amazon Prime. It was okay. I think Are You Afraid of the Dark, generally speaking, was better. Yeah. Well, was there anything good about this movie? Thora Birch. I, she's so good. I also I thought really the witches were funny together sometimes. Yeah. Uh, well, they had a kind of, like, Marx Brothers yeah. thing going on. Um, yeah. And I like all three of those actresses I love and are incredibly talented and wonderful um i just didn't love them in this movie because i just the characters themselves were uncomfortable um Mm -hmm. oh gary marshall and penny marshall show up in this they did gary marshall is the devil Mm -hmm. it's really funny um 
Oh, I wrote down stranger danger. I don't know why, but stranger danger that? was a thing. No, I just was thinking about like how as children we were told like not to talk to strangers mm -hmm. and stuff because they might be dangerous, but I don't remember why I was thinking about that. Do you think, okay, I really hate talking to strangers now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that that's why? Like, was I just taught to be, I was definitely taught to be scared of everybody, and yeah. it definitely comes naturally for me to be scared of everybody, but, like, yeah. do you think that's part of it? It might be. I never thought about it before. Huh. I've never thought about that either. I, th I, I mean, my stranger danger comes more from working in retail, I mm -hmm. think, and being like, oh, no, humans are monsters. <laughs> There's oh, a, a yeah. monster lurking in each and every one of you. <laughs> Yeah. Well, living in a small town now, though, I'm much better at strangers. Because mm -hmm. like, they're not really it. strangers. But, like, yeah, like, you just, like, have to make eye contact with people a lot more. <laughs> Which is a lot less overwhelming when you're not, like, passing thousands of people on the street every day. Yeah, but do you know what's fun now? I go to, like, New York and walk around, and I make eye contact with people, and it's, like, super <laughs> weird. That's funny. Um... Yeah, Thor Birch was good. She was really uh, cute. She was really cute. I love her, and I wish she was in more things. She's like the um, perfect, like, sassy younger sister. Yeah, and I, because I saw her so much, like, as a teen, as like a sullen, drawn-in teenager, you know, like in Ghost World and stuff, mm -hmm. like, to see her as, like, this effervescent little girl was really nice. I liked it. Just the way that she moved her body was just, like, a lot freer <laughs> and f more fun. Um, she is the reason that I got the worst haircut of my life. What? Why? I got I got a magazine. I don't know. It was maybe, like, she was on the cover of, like, YM or Jane magazine. Whoa, or, like, YM? some other. Oh, my God. I forgot yeah. that was a thing. And she had this really cute bob. That was, like, kind of wavy, not entirely curly, but, like, wavy. Um, and I was like, oh, that looks so good. I should cut my hair like that. And then I, like, went to a mall haircutting place, and I forgot to tell them that I have curly hair. So, because <laughs> uh, I guess I, like, went in there with straight hair. Maybe I had my hair up. And so when they were blow-drying my hair, they blow-dried it, like, to its full curl. And it was just a big puff ball, and I had to stop in another store and buy a hat oh <laughs> wasn't the haircut so much as it was the like the styling afterwards that was a problem yeah so that's my fun thora birch story <laughs> um you just reminded me that ym was a thing and i'm like reading it now Googling oh yeah it. yeah i totally forgot about this from when we were like 12 yeah it was like the only magazine subscription my mother would let me have or like the only teen magazine because it was less unempowering i guess than the other this teen is magazines. pretty bad i'm gonna read you some of what's on the cover okay. of these um love quiz date him or ditch him okay that's not bad uh the answer is always ditch him <laughs> yeah i mean 2018 ditch him um and in fact if you can Dig a ditch and throw him into it. <laughs> um, okay, this one's not bad. Is stress making you fat? I don't know. Is it? Yeah, I mean, I just stress ate a shit ton of food. <laughs> so probably in this case, yes. Um, let's see. But also, I mean, just problematic framing. Anything making you fat. Not great. Not great. Not great. But probably if you compared it to a lot of the other teen magazines at the time. The, the, this one is just Amanda Bynes on the cover. And then in like large pink font, it says boys, boys, boys. And it gets like <laughs> larger every time. <sighs> I don't need that shit. But imagine if it said or girls, who cares? <laughs> like that would have been great. I, maybe... Teen Magazine should do that. Or instead. what if it just said relationships don't matter as much as you think they do? You're <laughs> good. Value your friends instead. <laughs> or maybe they do if you want them to, and that's cool too. <laughs> like, it's 
fine. Just, it's all fine. You're we fine. Should, You're beautiful. We should, we should make that magazine cover. Mm, I mean, yeah, we could do a mock-up, but um, I wouldn't want to like actually make the whole magazine. It would be like a one issue magazine. I mean, that's the the real problem is that like they always just need it's the content monster, you know. They need words. Yeah. Home alone hunks. Why the hottest guys want you to make the first move? What does home alone hunks mean? I don't know. <laughs> can you can you navigate to the article and we can no, find it's out? No, just the covers. Oh, that's unfortunate. Maybe it's <laughs> all the hunks that were in Home Alone, like the guy with the shovel. Well... And the guys that break into the house. <laughs> I mean, Eddie Furlong is on the cover of this, and he wasn't in Home Alone. Oh, who is he? Oh, he's the... the... From Terminator. Yeah. And American History X. Igby Goes Down, maybe, mm, also? No, that was a Culkin, wasn't mm, it? Maybe. That was like Kieran Culkin, one of the Culkin brothers. Sure, they look very similar. They do. I'm gonna see if we can find a quiz that we can do. Ooh. Is there I'm anything done we're, talking we're like, about? We Hocus haven't Pocus. talked about Hocus Pocus at all. <laughs> I what? didn't love it. It wasn't uh, great. I didn't. I didn't love it either. It was like one of the movies where, like, by the end, I like wasn't paying attention anymore. I was mostly yeah. just, like, googling things about the movie. Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm proud well, of I got my a roommate buzz for feed. watching the whole thing because she thought she was gonna be really scared, and then she wasn't. Oh. <laughs> wasn't actually scary. It was. Okay. It did have a nice message about family. Did it? Yeah, because so. <clears throat> oh yeah, I found that upsetting. <laughs> Why? Uh, because it's about like an older brother and a younger sister, and uh, I have an older brother and I am his younger sister, and we do not have a great relationship. So. Yeah, I mean that also happens. But it and was he's nice like, that I'm your older brother, of course I'm going to save your life. And I'm like, oh, my older brother would not save my <laughs> life, probably. Like, he has better wilderness survival skills, I think, than I do, because he was an Eagle Scout. But, like, mm-hmm. otherwise, I would be saving the day in just about every situation. Ew, I don't like this one. It says, get notice now, killer summer looks. I mean, it's not, well, it, the killer part is a little the weird. The get noticed it, now part? mm but no beach body. No mention of a beach body. But you know that's what they mean. Yeah. Wow, baby Christian Slater's on this one. I am looking at one um, with the cast of Dawson's Creek. Well, actually, just Josh Jackson. What's her face with the blonde hair? Katie Holmes. Michelle Williams. Yeah, and what's his face with the blonde hair? James Dawson. Vanderbeek. Yeah. That's the cast of Dawson's Creek. Who was missing? Oh, I don't know. I thought there were more people. Mm, I didn't no, really watch it. That's the core group. Love secrets. Why guys run hot and cold? Is he crushing on you? Read his signals. He's probably just being a dickhead and he <laughs> doesn't is, care. And is thinking about lunch. He's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, always. Uh, oh, super sexy skin secrets. Totally happening hair. Parentheses. Twenty three new styles and mega watt makeup. This magazine, it says, Wikipedia says it started in the 30s. I wonder what it was like then. Yeah. Ooh, this is what with Alicia Silverstone on it. She blabs about her bat flick, her bod, and boy bliss. Love test. Is he worthy? No. Oh, this is the one that you were looking at. Get noticed now. Killer summer looks. Oh, Kelly Kapowski's on this one. Uh, the other thing that this one says is 250 dudes dish guy secrets. And then underneath it's smooching, sex, the L word. And I was just like, mm, I think that's a different L word than I'm thinking of. Um, what L word were you thinking of? The HBO the, TV the show word. about lesbians. Yeah. <laughs> the Showtime show, yeah. Or was that on Showtime? I, I think it was, it was on Showtime because I think it was the same... Because it was on at the same ish time as Queer as Folk, and I think oh, they were on okay. the same network. Yeah. Ugh, baby Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp, what has Ugh. become of you? The worst. Ugh. He's the worst. Did you read that Rolling Stone? Um, no, I think I read part of it. Oh my goodness! What a just awful human. I've been thinking a lot about Skeet Ulrich, 
who is oh, like Skeet Ulrich. He's like the Bobo Johnny Depp. Ex- that's exactly what I was gonna well, say. Well, he's in the next movie that we're watching. If we, which is also do. why I've been thinking about him. Yes, but also because I just watched season two of Riverdale and he plays Jughead's hot dad. Oh, um, he's really good. That show is so good. Um, but and I, I actually like looked him up to like see if he's a bad person or not. I was like, <laughs> maybe, maybe he's not a bad person. So I am like fully on team Ski Ult, team Ski Ultrich. Um, also, he what was else? in uh, Scream. Which That's is what one I was going to ask if he was in. It was him and uh, Matthew Lillard, right? Yeah. We should watch Scream. We should. Uh, I was looking at like horror movie buttons on Etsy the other day, and there was what, like buttons, like to like with a pin, like a button. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like the circular ones. I thought maybe it was like a thing I didn't understand about oh, okay. the internet. Yeah. No, you got it. <laughs> um, and there was one of him like sexily licking blood off of his finger <laughs> from Scream, <laughs> which is upsetting, but also kind of sexy. So I don't know. I'm going to look up a gif of it now. <laughs> yeah, I did think about the Leonardo DiCaprio cigarette gif. Gif. Whatever. Did you say gif? I get nervous every time because I just don't, I don't care, Oh, I but so I don't want anyone strongly, to give me a hard time about it either. I so strongly feel that it's GIF. Why? Who oh, cares? Oh, that's gross. <laughs> I'm watching it. I'm watching yeah. it like blood off his finger. It was a static <laughs> image and not actually a moving image. Maybe it's grosser if well, he's moving. It, I think in the movie, it's like he's licking it because it's corn syrup. It's not actually blood oh, okay. in the movie. Well, that makes me feel in even better part. about it. I think later there's a lot of blood, but mm-hmm. yeah, I'll send it to you. It's oh, possible yeah, that, that is we've... way more upsetting when it moves. But like, I can... just the static image is pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what? I don't know. I think we ran out of things to say about Hocus Pocus. Oh, for sure. We did. I did not love it. Did you take notes, even? I took a few notes, but we basically covered... Oh, the book with the eye is cool. That was cool. And a little actually scary. Yeah. Um. And also, I think just the production design in general I liked. I liked the design, like the character design of the witches. They had great hair. Um... So I like the lighting a lot. Great hair. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, her curls just look so good. But then they disappeared in the middle. Did they? Yeah, like her I hair was noticed. like straight for half the movie for no reason. Oh wow! Like after it rained, her hair got straight, which we know is That's a lie. That's not how that works. Ah, I know it should be the opposite. Uh, interesting. No, it didn't rain. It was like after he put the sprinkler on them. Interesting. Still not how that works. But the lighting was good. There was a lot of interesting lighting. It was well directed and well. Yeah. The cinematography was nice. Like it was. It was fine. Good. The Everything sets were good. was fine. <laughs> 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 Except for the things that we talked about that were not fine. <laughs> um, and the only thing I think that we didn't talk about was his cool bedroom with the stairs in it. That was okay. cool, but they didn't really go anywhere. No. They, well, they went up to, like, the cupola in the top of the house, which is that little, like, tower on top. Mm-hmm. I want one of those so badly. Oh, and the other thing that I wrote down was kiln death, because he puts the witches in a kiln at school and then turns it on. Which was smart, but it didn't work. Nope. It did not work, because this movie was dumb. How did they actually kill them in the end? That's a good question. Oh, I know. The sun oh, the rose sun came and they up. just turned to... They said yeah. that they were going to turn to dust, but then they just turned into statues. No, two... Well, so they did all eventually turn into dust. Bette Midler turns into a statue statue, and then turns to dust, and the other two turned to dust. Oh. Like, immediately, okay. I think. Yeah, no, I had that same thought where I was like, that's not... That's not dust. That's a statue. And then she exploded. Well, now I, I can say that I have seen Hocus Pocus... Yeah, was that like a thing that you felt like you were needing to say? I, people told me that I needed to see it. Now uh, you can g- tell them to go watch it again so they can see how weird it is. Yeah. Or not. Don't waste your time. It's no, but you can not explain it. it to them. You can be like, actually, actually, virginity is a saying, problem. <laughs> actually, here's why you should stop saying that to people because there are problems. Yeah. Um, 
But I'm excited to watch our next movie. Yeah, me too. Which is, should I say? I yeah, okay, you say it. We can, Okay. whatever. We what reserve is it the right called? to change I, our minds. But... It's title just evaporated from my brain. The Craft? The Craft. There you go. I was going to say The Cult, and I was like, that is not right, but I don't no. know what the right thing is. The Craft, which I watched last year around Halloween. Me and... too had a lot of really complicated feelings about it so i'm looking forward to really hashing it out after we take another watch because again like so much has happened over the past year i might have a completely different read on it again this time totally different yeah yeah um i like just to to like briefly summarize how i felt about it last time was that like First of all, teenage girls are the most powerful beings in the universe, and mm-hmm. that's why they're always trying. To, the man is always trying to keep them down. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also, like this movie it is full of like these really powerful girls, but it's still all like written, directed, and produced by men, which I have a hard time with. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll get into it. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Oh, I'm driving this bus. How this bus. how do I land? Um, <laughs> have you ever seen um, Kurt Brownoller came out like he like did a Kickstarter so that he could yeah with the rent plane. an airplane yeah to skywrite how do I land mm-hmm. and then made it the cover of one of his albums. It makes me laugh so that. hard. He's funny. I like. He's him. so funny. I He's like so him weirdo. a lot. Yeah. Um, Have you ever heard his story about? I think he tells it on "You Made It Weird," probably. Um, which about, one? About oh, about uh, being with that woman for n- like no fifteen years. No, no. about um, auditioning for. I think it was a part in Bruno. Oh although yeah, <laughs> I, w- where he had to speak German, but just like yeah. straight up didn't speak German and did yeah. the whole audition anyway in like nonsense words. Uh huh. Oh, I forgot about that. I want to listen to that again. Yeah, that's really funny. Uh, he's had a, f- a few good stories on This American Life, too. Yeah. Um, and it's also great to see do stand-up, so I have see seen if he's him. playing our town soon. Yeah, go see him. He's good. He's weird. He's different. Very weird and different. I don't know if he's still as weird and different, but... Have you... Do you know Kristen Schaal is a horse? Um... <laughs> I've tried to that explain. That is a string of words, and I'm not sure how to react. <laughs> I've explained to them. Kristen Shaw as a horse to like four people in the last week. I don't know why. So he used to do. Um, I mean, I can't do this justice. Like truly, if you're listening to my words right now, just go Google it. Um, but him and Kristen Shaw were comedy partners for a long right. time. Yeah. Um, and they did a bit where he would sing about how she was a horse, like a maniac, like clapping, singing, <laughs> and she would dance like a horse and she had to do it for as long as he would sing. And so they would do it for like, like 10 minutes. Like, <laughs> okay. I'm going to look that up. It's really good. Cause it's that kind of thing where you're like, this is funny. I'm angry. Oh, it's funny again. <laughs> Yeah, it just goes on for long enough that it becomes really funny mm-hmm. again. It was on, I think they first heard of it on a Radio Lab episode. Okay. They, they talk about, it fit, it fit the theme somehow. Yeah. It's a good episode. That's really funny. I saw her open for Flight of the Concord. Me once. too. Did you see her do the thing where she With um, the does her? Yeah, well, the no, not the mat. Yes, yes, the mattress. <laughs> but also the thing where she eats the cake and auditions for Law & Order SVU. <laughs> yes. I love that bit. Yeah. Oh, she's so funny and weird. I've never talked to somebody else who's also seen that and knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm sorry it's not more satisfying. No, it is. It's good. Okay, I just good. I just said a really weird reference that nobody yeah. understands and you were like, Yeah. <laughs> yep, I was there. That's all I needed. Okay, good. Well, how do I land? <laughs> um Jordan if people wanted to find you, where should they look? I am on Instagram at JordoPC. I got some good circus stuff. Yeah, um, circus stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am also on Instagram at Bimps, B I M P S E, and Twitter and stuff, but the internet is a terrible place. Uh, but you can find us on the internet uh, at cageclub.me with all of the other wonderful podcasts on the cage club podcast network there's a new one coming soon 
that Joey told us to plug, but I honestly can't tell you what it's called. Is it the X-Men one? It's about the X-Men, yes. It came out, I think so. it came out today. Okay. Well, not today when you're listening to this, like today when we're recording this, so like it's out, go listen to it. Yeah, go to cageclub.me and you'll find out what it's called there. I am so Hold sorry. Hold on, I'm looking. To we're going to do a better job at this. Okay. Um, find us X is on... for podcast. X is for podcast. Cage Club's so. first comic book podcast. Check that out. Mm-hmm. Comic books are cool and stuff. Uh, find us on Instagram at wistfulpod and... Um, I guess we'll talk to you talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.